It doesn't make me feel too good when people say forecasts are always wrong, especially when I know they're mostly right. So remember that next time when you look at your phone and it says it's going to be sunny and then it rains, you probably should have watched me. Hi, Wired. I'm Janice Huff, Chief Meteorologist at WNBC-TV New York. I'm here to debunk some common misconceptions about the weather. Tornadoes cannot cross water. Sure they can. Tornadoes can hit cities. They can cross water and they can cross mountains. Remember that the United States is mainly a rural country. Uh, we have cities and large metropolitan areas, but there's more countryside than there are big cities. And so we don't hear of uh, tornadoes hitting cities as much because they mostly hit rural areas. How far does a tornado travel? Well, that varies. Most tornadoes are small and weak, but some of the bigger tornadoes can travel much farther. We call those long track tornadoes, and the longest track we have on record is the Great Tri-State Tornado of 1925, which traveled from Missouri to Illinois to Indiana, over 200 miles, one storm. Most of the tornadoes that happen around the world happen in the United States, and the reason why is because we almost have the perfect setup for tornadoes to develop, which is right in the central portion of our country in the southeast, where warm, moist air from the Gulf of Mexico meets up with cold, dry air from Canada and very dry air coming in from the western states. When all of those ingredients come together, you get big supercell thunderstorms. One of the things you might look for in a thunderstorm if you're outdoors to notice or see if there's a tornado would be rotation in the clouds. Oftentimes, thunderstorms, supercells that produce tornadoes are actually rotating clouds. You may start to see a little appendage on the back end of the thunderstorm. The wall cloud sort of separate itself or at least drop down from the back of the cloud. If that starts to rotate and you start to see a little funnel forming, then there's your tornado. You don't always see it that way, but it often happens that way. Tornadoes have hit every state in the United States, so always stay aware when there's severe weather. Lightning doesn't strike the same place twice. Actually, lightning has struck many locations more than once, like the Empire State Building. Even people. Roy Sullivan, who was a park ranger at Shenandoah National Park in Virginia, was struck seven separate times and lived to tell about everyone. Now, the chances of you being struck by lightning is about one in 500,000. But if you're outside when there is a thunderstorm and you can hear the thunder, that means there's lightning very close by. So you really should go inside. One lightning bolt is equal to about 300 million volts of electricity. Now your standard household volt is only 120. One of those bolts could actually power one incandescent light bulb in your house for three months. Rain is shaped like teardrops? Not really. Instead of looking like a teardrop or a round circle, it looks like a hamburger bun. <laughs> Raindrops start out usually high in the clouds as ice or snow, and as it falls through a warmer layer, it melts. But because there are updrafts and downdrafts going on inside the cloud, these raindrops are colliding with each other to form bigger raindrops and then they get heavy enough and they start to fall to the ground. But as they're falling, their shape changes because of the air underneath. They're not shaped like teardrops. So how do we track raindrops, precipitation, snow? In our case at WNBC, we use an S-band high frequency dual polarization weather radar called Storm Tracker 4. Dual polarization means that the scan goes vertical and horizontal, so we can actually get a better idea of the shapes of the articles that are in the cloud. We can tell the difference between raindrops and snow, snow and hail, because we can detect the shape using a sophisticated radar. And that's usually how we track weather as it's moving across the country. When it reaches your region, you use the radar so you can see it coming. And we can let everybody know, here comes the rain. Rainbows have seven colors. That's pretty much true. We see the colors of the rainbow in stripes 
but they're actually not in stripes. It's one continuous change, one continuous band of color. Rainbows are an actual circle. Did you know that? The rain has to be opposite of the sun in order for you to get the rainbow. And the rain droplets refract or bend the light, the white light that passes through, and then we're able to see that color band, that bow. A double rainbow happens when the light is reflected twice through the raindrops. It's not as intense as the primary rainbow, it's the secondary rainbow, and the colors are opposite too from the reflections. How do you get a triple rainbow? That's even rarer, but the light has to reflect off of something else. So let's say you have a rainbow, your primary rainbow, and then maybe you have a secondary rainbow because the light's passing through twice, but then you may have a body of water nearby that reflects light again. And then you get another band of color, and then you get a triple rainbow. The weather forecast is always wrong. No, it's mostly right. The apps on your phone where you look at that and you say, oh, the weather's gonna be this, that, and the other thing. Those apps are good, but they're not great. And they're not always the most accurate because they use raw weather data. Whereas we can use data, we use technology, we use our eyes and ears to actually see what's going on. All of these things help to make our forecasts more accurate than just looking at your phone. The atmosphere is like a fluid. It's always constantly moving. Oftentimes, as you get farther out into the forecast, it may not be as accurate. However, forecasts, even longer range ones, like maybe out to 10 days, have become more accurate over time with new technology. There are all sorts of observations from satellites, from radio sounds that are taken up by weather balloons, from buoys, from aircraft. All these things go into a computer forecast, a numerical model. And then that will take all that data that we put in from the present and maybe from the past too, and then crank out the future. Many things that are out of our control can disrupt weather forecasting and cause the forecast to maybe be less accurate. Like COVID-19, when we had the shutdown, back in March, there were fewer planes flying in the sky. We received data from aircraft that help us make forecasts. There was a 75 to 80% drop off in air traffic, and that changed the forecast. What weather patterns are the most difficult to forecast? It depends on where you live. On the East Coast, it's probably blizzards. Trying to figure out where that rain, ice, snow line is actually going to set up. For other parts of the country, it's different things. On the front range of the Rockies in Colorado, they get these down-sloping winds called Chinooks. Those things can heat up the atmosphere or heat up the ground 30, 40 degrees in minutes. Thanks for tuning in. The weather is the only thing that affects our lives every day, and we have to really pay attention to it. So remember to stay weather aware so you'll know what to wear. And that's your weather. Take it away.